To provide context for our discussion on the measurement of inventories, we use the general ledger accounts commonly associated with the perpetual system of inventory recording. In these accounts, you can briefly see the purchase of inventories on the debit side, the allocation thereof to cost of sales on the credit, as well as a possible write down to net realizable value on the credit side. Focusing first on the cost of inventories associated with the purchase thereof, paragraphs 11, 15 to 18 of IS2 offers guidance in this respect. Firstly, paragraph 11 offers indications of potential items to be included in the cost of purchase, as well as amounts that may need to be subtracted from these commonly discounts. There may be other costs incurred that are not listed in paragraph 11, and these are commonly costs associated with getting the inventories and their location and condition for sale. Other costs to be incurred are borrowing costs, which are outside the scope of our discussion this year, uh, necessary storage costs in the production process for something like wine where there's a lengthy production process. And then there are other amounts that will be excluded from the cost of inventories but included in the cost of sales. For example, abnormal spillage, fixed overheads not allocated. Deferred settlement needs to also be taken into account in calculating the cost of inventories and this simply means that if there is time value of money associated with the delayed payment that this needs to be taken out and recognised as finance cost rather than as part of the cost of inventories. An alternative to all of the above cost calculations may be the retail method of accounting. If you have a fairly generic product of which there are several items, um, this method may be cost beneficial. We now consider the transfer of these costs incurred to acquire the inventories to cost of sales. This is generally driven by the FIFO, Weighted Average and Specific Identification cost formulas.